Welcome back. A new poll sums up the dilemma we face as a nation. According to the Axios Survey Monkey poll, Americans are split on whether the Russian interference with our election is a serious issue. By a 50 to 47 margin, those asked say it is. But check out how it breaks down according to party lines. 85% of Republicans see it as a distraction. 85% of Democrats believe it's a serious issue. And that's the dilemma, because if we Americans can't agree whether our nation's number one adversary is interfering with the election of the president of the United States, it is a clear and present danger, then we have bigger problems than just the Russians. Joining us for more are Cheryl Wilson, the chair of the Manatee Democratic Party, and Frank Patti of the Sarasota Republican Party. So Frank, let me start with you. A distraction or a serious issue? Uh, I think it's a serious issue in the sense that any country that is hitting us in cyberspace that's doing that has to be watched. I think um, if we want to play games and there's a distraction, or the action takes the precedent of it all. Start to do something now that will close out. That makes you a minority in terms of your own party, in terms of, of you know, as I said, 85% of Republicans say it's merely a distraction. What would you, what would you say to a, a Republican voter or that, that believes that. It may be a distraction, but that's not the important issue. If it's happening, it has to be solved. Cheryl, it, I, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if the situation was reversed and this was, uh, you know, President Obama or Hillary Clinton as president and you had the same fact Patterson, would those numbers be reversed? I have asked myself that question many times. I've even looked inward to see perhaps how I would view it. Um, I, I hope and like to think that it would not. Um, I think what Frank has just expressed is um, America, being an American and being uh, concerned about our democracy and our processes. Um, distraction or not, there doesn't seem to be dispute on whether it happened. And just how we characterize it, characterize it doesn't change the fact that it happened. You know, the president had difficulty this week <laughs> saying that he agrees with our intelligence community, uh, uh, intelligence community, he continues to say the whole investigation is a witch hunt, which the FBI director, his FBI director, said this. Is there anything that would allow it to be called a witch hunt? I've been consistent. I get asked this a lot. I am, do not believe Special Counsel Mueller is on a witch hunt. Uh, I think it's a professional investigation conducted by a man that I've known to be a straight shooter uh, in all my interactions with him in my past life in government uh, and certainly uh, since then. Um, so I don't think it's a witch hunt. So Frank, there are two separate issues here. Obviously, Special Counsel Mueller is investigating the Russian inter intrusion in our mm -hmm. election system and whether or not there was any kind of conspiracy to go along with it. When you see the president tweet and talk about witch hunts, what, what goes through your mind? Well, first of all, they, it, it's they, taken so long that it turns into a witch hunt at a point. He has nothing, no collusion on this. Well, we don't, how, how do you know that? How long has it taken? Who's, well, who's been indicted? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, do prosecutors tell you what their evidence is before they? Oh, it's leaked all over the place right, every time there's something. Okay. But that, that's Mueller. Okay. <laughs> We are just warming up on the conversation in the week in Washington. In the Welcome back. We are talking about the week in Washington. And joining us for more are Cheryl Wilson, the chair of the Manatee Democratic Party, and Frank Patti of the Sarasota Republican Party. So, Cheryl, the president comes back to the United States amid a lot of criticism by Democrats and Republicans about what he said or did not say in Helsinki. He tries to correct the record a couple of times. And then kind of shocks the world again by inviting President Putin to Washington for the fall. Um, Say let's that again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, apparently also the uh, director of national intelligence for uh, the United States uh, was also kind of surprised. Take a look at this. I do want to say we have some breaking news. The White House has announced on Twitter that Vladimir Putin is coming to the White House in the fall. Say that again? <laughs> <laughs> you, Vladimir Putin coming to the- Did I hear you? Did I hear you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be special. 
<laughs> now that's President Trump's director of national intelligence, but it really kind of underscores what's happening right now in terms of Washington. It, it, it's amusing to watch that, but there's a much more um, serious concern when, when you think about it. That, that officer should have never been put in that position. Um, I think he handled it as well as it could have been handled in, in the, the setting where he was. But um, that's just another example of the lack of communication, the lack of, a, of an agenda, not using the term to mean anything pro or negative, but just a, a plan. And um, he's freelancing. He's, he's shooting from the hip. Frank, uh, uh, folks have said that this is the president really doing what he does in terms of doubling down on anything when he receives criticism for it. The criticism, even by Republicans, was that he was not prepared for that summit. Uh, so why, especially with the midterms coming up and Republican control of, of Congress on the line, would you do this in the fall? First of all, I think his motives are good, number one. He wants peace. We've got so many enemies out there. You've got Russia, you've got China, you have North Korea, you have Iran, you have what's happening in Syria. I think he's trying to limit our exposure. If anything happens and explodes in several places, we can't handle but, it. But inviting Putin to the White House is the carrot. What has Russia done to deserve that, except for interfere in our election, invade Crimea, and wreak havoc in parts of the world. Okay, what did it do with Obama for him to sit there and say this is my last election and I'll be more pliable? Or take away from Poland and the Czech Republic the, the uh, missile shield they were supposed to get. He handed Russia everything and got nothing for it. But your question is a good one. Um, obviously this is what President Putin wants to happen. He, he wanted that invitation to the White House. So that begs the question, what did he, what, what was his um, influence and what was his strength that got it so easily. Well, I, but to pick up what Frank's point is, whatever Obama did in terms of tough talk and sanctions did not change Russia's behavior. Could it not be that the president who fancies himself as a deal maker will have a, a better shot at it? This isn't the deal making that Donald Trump has presented himself as being able to make. Donald Trump has always talked about being able to be successful in his deal making. He's had two high profile summits with two of the most powerful and most dangerous leaders in the world and he has come out looking very weak and very ineffective. I don't agree with that. With the Chinese right now, China is going to pot literally. Uh, with their economy. It's starting to get hurt very badly. So are our farmers. Uh, our farms can survive that. That isn't that big. So China can't. So China has been playing a mercantilist game for a long time. It's coming home to roost. They really have done a great job on that, but it's got to turn around. But, but Frank, the, I, again, I hate to kick up what other Republicans mm -hmm. are saying, but Republicans are saying that the president looked weak in terms of his performance in Helsinki earlier in the week and then inviting Putin to the White House later in the week. John Kennedy said it very nicely, never fear to negotiate, but never negotiate out of fear. He is trying to build something so that at least we have a relationship. You're talking about one of the nations between the two of us. We have 90% of the missiles in the world. If we don't build some sort of relationship with them, look, he may not have handled it as good as it could be. I will agree to that. But I think However, our, but his relationship is important. And I think why, uh, bringing him to the White House should continue with the talks. And no, what they're saying in those talks should not be out all over the place. And Obama didn't want what he was saying out all, all over the place, either, and justifiably so. The, the fear that he's negotiating from is what puts fear into Americans' concerns, is because we don't know why he is, why he is acting this way with the president of Russia. Um, it's been speculative, it's been salacious, it's been um, historical, but there is, there is getting, it, it's gaining a lot of credibility now that there is something that Putin is holding over the president of the United States. Right. That's where our fear comes in. Yeah, right, but well, hold, hold on, Frank, we've got to take a quick break. Got to pay the bills. Okay. Our, <laughs> our guests will be back in just a moment.
Welcome back. We are talking about the week in Washington and the week in Florida. And joining us for more are Cheryl Wilson, the chair of the Manatee Democratic Party, and Frank Patty of the Sarasota Republican Party. So we're going to turn to state politics right now uh, because in a couple of weeks, both the Democrats and Republicans will be choosing their candidates for governor. And, and Frank, I know that um, you have an affinity for, for Adam Putnam, who is running for governor. Uh, a lot of people here on the Sun Coast have been familiar with him for many years. It almost seems like he's been running for governor for like 20 years. But according to a new poll, Congressman Ron DeSantis has opened up a 12-point lead in Florida over Adam Putnam. And I'm curious what your reaction would be. Well, he's gotten the president's endorsement. That's one of the big things out there. And of course, the president's son is also helping out, and that's been pushing him along. Uh, I think that Putnam could close the lead, as get, get nearer to it. You think if President Trump gets on the plane and comes down here, because up until now, the president has only tweeted his endorsement, yeah. but if he came down here, uh, and, and in person endorsed uh, DeSantis that, that Adam Putnam could still close a gap? That, well, if he got on the plane and came down, that becomes another ball game altogether. And that would be very difficult for Putnam at that point. It would make it more difficult. Cheryl, does it matter to Democrats whether it's DeSantis or Putnam? Um, both the president has endorsed one, but both candidates endorse the president. They both have aligned very closely with President Trump. Um, I, I would second what you said. I would have guessed that Adam Putnam had been running for about eight years. We know a lot more about Adam Putnam than we do about DeSantis. Adam Putnam has also made some very poor decisions in his campaign in the last few weeks so or months. So um, that, that enters into Let's it, talk sure. about some of the Democratic polling right now. A new poll is also out showing that Jeff Green, the billionaire from West Palm Beach, has bolted to the top. He is spending a tremendous amount of money he is the last person to get into this race, and that, what does that say about your field of candidates? Well, we have five good candidates is, is the first observation I would make. Um, it's been going on a long time. I can kind of understand why Jeff Green, with, with his capability of getting himself known quickly, has um, had stayed out for so while. It reminds me a lot, and I certainly mean this in no negative way for Jeff Green, but it reminds me a lot of the way Rick Scott eight years ago suddenly presented himself to the and voters. And then you have eight years later. Yes, yes. I, I mean, and it's, it's, um, he, he was able to acquaint the voters with himself in a very short period of time. So Frank, let me ask you, out of the Democrats field that you see right now, which candidate gives you the most concern? Oh, Gil. Why? He wants to put a tax, an income tax. No, I, I, don't, I, don't, mean, I, don't, I don't mean about his policy, oh. about what candidate gives you the most concern in terms of being the, the, the biggest threat. Um, I, I'll be honest with you, I've been so busy with the Republican candidates, I haven't had a chance to breathe. I really haven't studied the Democrats. I usually do that right after who's out there and then get the battle lines drawn at that point. So I polling, haven't Polling for Democrats is so very even among the top two yeah. or three. It, um, you know, and, and it also depends upon which poll you're looking at at the moment. They've uh, varied quite a bit in the last several okay. weeks. We will have to leave it there. We want to thank both our guests for being here tonight. Cheryl Wilson is the chair of the Manatee Democratic Party, and Frank Patty is with the Sarasota Republican Party.